YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back with things to watch and a preview for the Cincinnati Bengals we have a playlist of these with different teams on the channel a lot more teams to get to make sure to comment with which team you think I should do next uh, but the Bengals I'm you know pretty high on the Bengals it's just do you trust them to stay healthy I picked them to win the Super Bowl last year obviously that was not possible it was not possible once they started to get really beat up you know especially with Joe Burrow but even while pretty depleted or close to it they put up a fight uh with several teams so it kind of shows the talent level uh and the solid coaching of the team so it's just really to sum up the Bengals if they stay healthy they're legit and so some of the things here to watch what you could expect some players to watch games to watch and we'll have some fans takes of course uh number three uh, and this goes a little deeper than what it just says. I think there's going to be a little bit of, you know, a slight change to that offense, uh, you know, how it looks uh, to what teams aren't expecting. And I think that involves the tight ends, uh, more reps for tight ends in general. I think it's going to be divided up between a lot of, a lot of the tight ends because they have a long list of the guys, but, and, and especially in the slot position, watch out for that and, and uh, again a lot of things kind of go into that first Tyler Boyd their long time slot receiver very good slot receiver is no longer on the team obviously with the Tennessee Titans uh, and they you know have added some receivers like at last draft this draft Jermaine Burton and Jermaine Burton has the quickness and may maybe the profile to play the slot position but mainly was an outside receiver for Alabama. I thought he did most of his damage along the sideline. Specifically, if you want to get specific, you'll come back routes. Um, I, I think he has the upside to play in the slot. I think other guys that they have, like Charlie Jones, they got last year. I, I, again, upside to play in the slot. But they have no guy that's going to be anywhere near the polish of Tyler Boyd right away. Meanwhile, they have a long list of tight ends. They add Mike Kosicki, which his issue, he's been flashy, but his issue has been... Is he a full-time tight end? Can he block? Not really. He's a move tight end. You know, kind of a receiver-style tight end that you can put in the slot. They also draft two tight ends that are pretty good receivers at the position. Eric All, if he's healthy, and one of my favorites, Tanner McLaughlin, who's coming off an injury, but and that is why he dropped a little bit, lacking a little bit of length. But the guy is legit. He was my number number three tight end in the class. Um really good at reading coverages, getting open and just a, just a playmaker as a pass catcher. So, uh, love that. So obviously they have a plan for the tight end position. Obviously it's going to look a little bit different. They're going to throw a little bit extra in the already good offense, the offensive playbook. So I'd watch out for that, the rotation there. And I thought some of the guys they have are pretty underrated. You know, Drew Sample is more of your guy that can block, but he's a very underrated tight end in general. Um, so pretty good rotation, more reps in the slot for tight ends rather than receivers. Definitely watch for that. Of course, some other receivers can step up. But I, I, again, I think as a whole in the past, like for pass catchers, we saw most of the reps come from Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. I think it's going to be Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and that's a tough part. I don't know if it's going to be a single tight end. I think if you combine the tight ends or, or a couple of them, they're going to be next. Like they're going to be taking over Tyler Boyd. And I don't think enough people are talking about that just because they're different positions, different play styles. But that to me, that's how it's going to be. It's going to be that Zach Taylor Bengals great offense with a little bit new of a flavor there. So I'm watching for that. Watching for... Yeah, is Gasicki the main guy in that role? Probably. Uh, do one of the rookies step up? Does All stay healthy? McLaughlin. I, I like McLaughlin better than All, to be honest. Um, but it's going to be fun to watch like how those two guys are used right away. I think they can make an instant impact as long as they are healthy. I just need one of them healthy, really. I'm uh, hoping they both stay healthy. But uh, number two, the versatility and rotation of the secondary. This is going to be fun to watch. And Lou Anaromo always coaches a good defense in general, but especially the secondary. He always has defensive backs that could play anything, any coverage they ask them to. And I think he's really good at coaching that out of them. Um, that's very important. And people don't talk about, like, if teams are stuck in only certain coverages because the defensive backs can only play those coverages, it's an issue, especially in important games and in playoff games where game plan is more of a factor. But uh, this defense always has some play, like maybe not the biggest name players back there. I know they had Jesse Bates at one point, but um, mainly talking about corner, um, you know, outside corner. They don't have the biggest names, but they got guys that, you know, they're better than you think. They, they're they pretty versatile in terms of, uh, you know, what coverages they can run and the different things they can do. But to take it a step further, 
this is going to be just a versatile defensive back group in general. I mean, they, they add... They add Geno Stone, who could you know give you a different. He was more of a rotation guy for the Ravens, but did very very well. But really good in zone coverage. I thought he got better in man, and that was kind of the issue with him coming out of Iowa. He was a standout guy there, but he dropped a little bit in the draft because people were teams were concerned about his man coverage ability. Uh, but he really showed like the different things he can do in the secondary. Uh, you know, obviously there. You know, you bring Von Bell back. Uh, obviously more of a strong safety. You have Jordan Battle in there. Then you have Daxon Hill, who was kind of, in Michigan, he was more of a versatile piece, could play the slot, can play strong, could play free. And he's kind of been that for the Bengals and talk about him playing corner, which I thought he had pr some pretty good reps there at Michigan as well. Um, you know, and then you have Mike Hilton, who's one of the very best, I actually say the best slot corner in football. Uh, you know, and you have DJ Turner, who can play inside, outside, uh, Taylor Britt, uh, I'd imagine, be sticking on the outside, which they need him to. Uh, you know, so they have they have a list, a long list of guys that can you know play in the secondary, play pretty well, but that you can kind of move around and give different looks with. So uh, I'm actually excited about that. I'm excited. We're talking about more about Dax Hill in a little bit. Uh, you know, Mike Hilton, one year left on his deal. Uh, I think between Dax Hill and, and DJ Turner. I think one of those guys kind of could be taking over that role in the future, but um, yeah, a lot of a, a lot of everything from the secondary. It's going to be fun to watch, and there are some questions like, how much does this guy play? How much does he play here? How much does he play there? You know, how do they use these guys? Who's the more of the sure thing starters? Who's more of the rotation guys? So um, yeah, maybe there's no star guy or Mike Hilton's right there, but in terms of the rest, star guy, but. There's a lot of good football players that are better than you think, more versatile than you think, more more uh, more important than you think to this team. So going to be uh, a lot of – I think I, – I love that. I, I played defensive back growing up, so I love that. You know, I love watching DBs. I love uh, when guys are versatile and, like, the different, different looks you can give in different situations. I love that kind of stuff. So that's number two for me on what to watch. Uh, and then we go to number one. Uh, and to me, well, to me, I said in the beginning of the video, the vi beginning of the video, the Bengals, if healthy, are a legit Super Bowl contender. I picked them to win the Super Bowl last year. It didn't work out because they were beat up. Uh, I think they're that good. I think they're that good across the board. Uh, well, the only thing really is the offensive line, but I, I don't think it's it only can get better to me. Like I, that's the only thing though. Like how much better? There's really not a whole lot of room for growth right now based on what they have, what they've added. Uh, but it only can be better. But to me, I mean, the Chiefs went two in a row. They're going for the three-peat. If you were to talk about, like, who has who has the best shot to stop the Chiefs in the entire NFL, I think it could be more likely an AFC team getting more cracks and I'm more, maybe not allowing them to get to the Super Bowl. But if you're talking about which team, like, matches up the best, which team has the best chance to give them issues, which team is just good enough to beat them and maybe be a Super Bowl team, I do not hesitate. I, I do not hesitate at all. It is the Cincinnati Bengals. The way they've played them, the way they can play them, how talented they are as a as a passing team, as an explosive team uh, with the big playability they have. and uh, Defensively, very, very solid. Again, we talk about they, they mix it up a lot. They throw teams off. You know, they, they've given the Chiefs a go in the past. And I, and I think something people don't realize, I talk about every year, is the Bengals' defense is more built actually for the playoffs. They're pretty good in the regular season as long as they're healthy. And there's some questions there. Uh, without DJ Reader, they were pretty bad. Stopping to run last year, they don't have him anymore. They add Sheldon Rankins, a totally different type of defensive tackle. So somebody's got to step up. So could, they don't have DJ Reader full-time anymore. So that is run defense, is that going to be an issue? Um, but it seemed like every year they got to the playoffs. Obviously, they weren't there last year because of uh, durability, but – or because of injuries, but it felt like every time they got to the playoffs, I'm going like, this is the best playoff defense. Like this is the toughest one to game plan for that. They can, they can throw anything at you. Like they, they have so many different looks. Uh, they can run any coverage. So I, I end up saying that like uh, the last time they're in the playoffs, I think the consensus consensus was it's uh probably the Niners that are best defense. And I agree going into the playoffs, but I was kind of left saying the Bengals look like the best defense in the, you know, year before that. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of them or the Ram the, the year they went to the Super Bowl. I thought it was them and the Rams. They played each other in the Super Bowl. Um, it was one year. I thought it was them and the Titans look like the best playoff defense. So I think they ended up playing each other that year as well. The Bengals got them in a good defensive game. 
Uh, you know, so that that the way that defense is coached, the way they play, the different looks they give, uh, they're built for the big games, the playoffs. Um, you know, and again, the offense is just good enough as long as it's healthy on any given day. So I think that that is the team. Like if there was a team that was best built, best made, and I guess it helps that we've seen them play well against Chiefs in the past. You know, to stop the dethrone the Chiefs. Maybe stop them from getting the Super Bowl. To me, it's the Bengals. I say that without hesitation. Of course, there's other teams uh, that are very good, maybe better than the Bengals in general. But for against, you know, for against the Chiefs, I think it's that team. They gotta stay healthy. That's the big thing with the Bengals. Like, stay healthy because you're legit if you're healthy. Uh, going on to some players to watch. I'm gonna go Miles Murphy. Actually, very decent chance we don't see much of him again. Uh, it's possible. So maybe that's. Uh, not too much of a player to watch if that's the case, but and that's because he's behind some really good defensive ends in, in Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, and they also have guys like Cam Sample. But Murphy, and I was very high on Miles Murphy as a prospect, probably higher than anyone was one of my guys of the draft, and I am nothing has changed. I am fully trusting uh, my evaluation because it's worked in the past, but I just know what I've seen from him. Uh, and, you know, the reason we didn't see a whole lot of him last year is, again, because he's behind two stud defensive ends. But he was also, I even said, as while loving Miles Murphy, he's a raw prospect. Pretty polished up in the run with his physicality. Um, he's re really good bull rush, really good job using his strength and length, but just did not have a collection of pass, ru pass rush moves. Kind of relied on the bull rush, but I think because he was young and he has the tools and a lot of things you can't coach, he already has, you you can get kind of get more moves out of him and be coached that into him, I should say. Um, so it's perfectly fine that he kind of, and he got some reps, but to kind of essentially sit and learn uh, from a good coach, but uh, good pass rushers that, I mean, that, those are the same style pass rushers. Like that, he fits the Bengals. He fits like Trey Hendricks and Sam Hubbard to a T, in my opinion. Uh, and Trey Hendricks in his situation, you know, wanting a, a new contract and uh, probably not going to get it. So could this be it this last year for Hendrickson? So they want to see if Murphy can kind of fill his shoes and be that guy. So I would imagine he gets more reps, and I, I think he has tremendous upside. I'm not expecting, like, crazy production this year, not saying that, but I love his potential. I'm gonna I'm 100% sticking with the, the prospect evaluation because he's essentially still a prospect, uh, you know, what he can be in the long run, and I think it's a perfect fit. So I'm watching for him, see if there's kind of a second-year step up in terms of reps and, and maybe some production then it should come along with it. Uh, number two, we touched on a little bit. Daxon Hill, uh, who is Michigan safety, listed as Michigan safety a few years ago. But, uh, you know, I actually thought he played best in the slot. Uh, and the Bengals drafted him. It's like, all right, they already have Mike Hilton. At that time, they had pretty good corners. Um, you know, he's and he's listed as a safety. He's going to play safety, but didn't play much right away. Played a little bit more last year. I liked his play in the box. They kind of used him as like a Swiss Army knife, you know, blitzing. I thought he looked pretty decent there. But how is he covered, covering downfield? That's kind of the situation. They've added multiple safeties on top of Jordan Battle getting some reps last year. Their rookie from Alabama, who's a true like split field safety. Um, so uh, then there's talk about Daxon Hill. It sounds like he will move to corner and I like it. I actually like that because, uh, you know, I think people saw that people kind of get confused when guys are coming out. Like if they're listed as a safety, like what they actually are, this really wasn't a downfield covered safety at Michigan. And I said that at the time, like to me, he's more of a strong safety or a slot corner. Um, and he had, I even mentioned it then too. Like he had some reps at outside corner, when, I think they, when they drafted him, I said, I actually like him better because the take when they drafted him was like, this is a future Jesse Bates replacement. And I'm like, this is not a Jesse Bates style player. This is not a free safety. Uh, and I said, I actually like him better at outside corner based off the few reps that I saw than at free safety. And here we go. They're moving him to corner with the potential to play uh, start outside, really, because it's Cam Taylor Britt. Uh, Britt excuse me, uh, and DJ Turner, another Michigan guy who was like, is he outside or is he a slot guy? He had moments last year, but uh, teams were picking on him a little bit when he was starting. Um, so they're in, Mike Hilton's a great slot corner. So he's not getting replaced this year, right? Um, you know, so Hill has an opportunity to play some outside corner. I think he has some upside there. But Mike Hilton is, has an expiring contract. And I way they're built, I do not think they're going to re-sign him. 
I, I think either Daxon Hill or DJ Turner will take over in that slot role. So will they get some reps there as well? So I'm really excited to see how this works out. His upside, does he start? Uh, you know, I think he's going to get playing time and he, he can make an impact even if it's a rotational piece. So I'm excited about that. That actually, this uh, this move makes more sense. This is kind of on par with uh, what I thought, uh, why I trust the prospect evaluations and why we're going to trust Miles Murphy still. So this is kind of makes more sense to what my prospect evaluation was on Hill than compared to what they brought him in to do originally. So I'm actually excited about something like that. Uh, and then number one, obvious one, we have to go with Joe Burrow here. This to me, if he is fully, fully healthy in the, in the injuries didn't like set him back or anything, this is the second best quarterback in football. In my opinion, if he's out like right now, I'm calling Josh Allen the second best quarterback in football. But if Joe Burrow, can fully stay healthy, like I think he's the guy there. It's hard to say anyone's better than Patrick Mahomes, um, but Joe Burrows is that that smart, that good of a passer, that accurate of a passer. Uh, big play ability who can escape the pressure. I don't, I don't have to break. I don't think I have to break down Joe Burrow for everyone. If he's healthy, he's the guy. But the, when I was making this video, I mean, we it's common sense. Like we know Joe Burrow has to stay healthy. We know in the back of our minds he's had multiple injuries. Um, and he looked kind of that, that, you know, the wrist situation last year just didn't look right. Him throwing the football. So, uh, what happened? What, what the hell went down exactly? Uh, is he going to be a hundred percent? So everyone knows these things, but as I was making this video, I'm like, I'm thinking like, what if Joe Burrow continues to have a problem? You know, no matter what the injury is, I guess. And he's just out this year at for, for part of it, it gets injured again, whatever. I don't like thinking like that. I'm going to stay optimistic. Joe Burrow's going to stay healthy, but what if, and I'm thinking, like, what, yeah, what if? Like, that? that's a situation, like, for the Bengals' future. Like, do they have to start looking for quarterback? quarterbacks? It's hard to say because you have such a rare, elite, elite talent here that could win a Super Bowl if he's healthy. I mean, he brought him to Super Bowl at a way too early stage before anyone expected. So it's a negative thought. It's a thought. I don't even want to think about it, but we kind of have to here. Like, what if... Like, what is the process? Like, it's a big question. So, it, it like, a must-stay-healthy situation. It's only, like, we're thinking, like, the Bengals are, like, they're either going to win this Super Bowl or be that Super Bowl-type team or they're going to be beat up. And it's, because if they're not a Super Bowl team, I'd imagine it's because they're beat up again. Like, if they're fully healthy, I don't see a scenario of them being fully, fully healthy and them not being, like, a contender. I'm not saying they have to win the Super Bowl. But you could argue it's like kind of a Super Bowl or bust year. Jamar Chase needs an extension. T. Higgins is, you know, I could have put that in the first slide there. Like, is it a Super Bowl or bust year? Really? You know, Mike Hilton's going to be a free agent. Um, the more I'm thinking about it, it kind of is. But, like, there's a scenario where the Bengals, like, a, this is weird. Because it's a realistic scenario where the Bengals win the Super Bowl. I think it's pretty realistic. They have to stay healthy. But they're that good. Win the Super Bowl. There is a realistic scenario where it just, this shit happens again. They're beat up, you know, more than just Burrow again because we've seen it. Um, and, and then they and they're gonna lose T. Higgins, and they gotta try to find, you know, and they're gonna and they're gonna extend Chase, but um, and then they're going in the offseason. Like, what the hell is the plan? Like, we got we got our quarterbacks always hurt, so it could either be just it's that's sad to me. That's like that that's like that's sad. That like if that's the case, because you had it, like you have this team together. Maybe they give it a go again, but you can be in this you know, again. Kind of going back to it, they can win the Super Bowl, or they can be in this disastrous, sad like situation where they have to make some tough decisions going forward for you know going into the off season. So it's it's kind of weird to think about. So it's a team all eyes on the Bengals. Will they stay healthy? Because if they're healthy, they are good. Games to watch, try to stay away from the division games with these because that's obvious, but the division games are always good. I almost always think, like, they're all going to split. Ravens, Bengals, they're going to split. The, you know, Bengals, Steelers, they're going to split. And the that's how I always think of things. And, you know, maybe the Bengals get two on a team. You know, maybe they, I don't think they'll go 0-2 on a team, but um, those games will always be big. It seems like those Steelers games are always nuts, and they play them at the end of the year. Uh, so that... Uh, obviously those games will be huge and things to watch. We talked about the Chiefs, how they match up, but they match up better. They, they give the Chiefs the biggest run, you know, the biggest problems, and they play uh, in KC against the Super Bowl champs in Week 2. The issue, you know, It almost feels like when they play, even the last time when the Chiefs beat them, it felt like, yeah, again, the matchup, like X's and O's, like almost sides with the Bengals. Like 
But then week two, the Bengals always start slow for some reason. They always, but they should be healthy at this point. You know, knock on wood. This is actual wood right here that I'm knocking on. Um, you know, they, they're week two, they got to be healthy in week two. So it should be a pretty good battle. But can they overcome like the slow starts? Uh, and the Chiefs didn't look all that great early last year. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. So that should be an interesting game. The Eagles games, I think that I love that game uh, versus the Eagles in week eight. And that's like, how do they match up with each other? Like, I'm usually good at figuring out like how they, you know, little things that like side towards one teams and one team. And this is an intriguing matchup. I I, I think anything could go like, it's just kind of up in the air. And as long as they're both healthy, um, you know, how things shake out in this game. But we do know. It's a pretty even matchup. It's going to be a hell of a football game to watch. But, yeah, do the, does the Eagles pass rush get over Burrow? But I think Burrow could really air it out on that secondary or that pet, that passing game, I should say. Um, you know, it, it, that, that one should be a lot of fun, actually. Uh, and then the Cowboys, I like the matchup a lot. And remember, it's not the playoff Cowboys. It's the regular season Cowboys in Week 14 in Dallas. Like, that's a team. That's a tough team to play in Dallas in Week 14 regular season. Uh, and it's a really even matchup, like both the teams. Uh, and I would say maybe not that even last year if they were both healthy. I actually probably, well, they're just different, I should say, in terms of even matchup. Like they're both good. But this year it's a lot more even in the type of teams they are as long as, again, they're both healthy at this time. Um, both valuing the passing game way more. You know, the Cowboys really don't have a running back, it feels like, right now. And then the uh, Bengals going from Joe Mixon to Zach Moss. We know they want to pass the football. These are the teams that they have a bunch of like you know big-time receivers, like a Jamar Chase or CeeDee Lamb. They want to air it out. Both these teams want to air it out. And then defensively, and like I said, maybe why I wouldn't say they were even uh, style of play last year is because under Dan Quinn, they're just like all-man coverage. Mike Zimmer brings a lot of zone uh, and mixes it up a lot. It's, they're pretty similar defenses now, and they're both pretty strong. Um, so th- this is an even – like in terms of style of play, matchup, and maybe talent, you know, talking about, again, in the big games, I, I like the Bengals a little bit better, but in the regular season, week 14 in Dallas, I mean, that's a heavyweight paddle at that in the regular season. So it's actually another really good one. And again, the AFC North uh, battles will will be battles. Uh, some fans takes, uh, ex-subscribers uh, will always be involved in this. Cameron Sullivan been playing along a lot. Appreciate you, Cam. After losing Mixon, how do they balance possibly? That's a, that's a good point, too. Uh, I didn't really touch on that. I, t- I said it, but I didn't really touch on that. They go from Mixon to Moss. Moss looked really good last year, but he's just not Joe Mixon. Um, you know, and they have Chase Brown. Um, you know, so how did, are they going to go... Are they going to run less? Because Mixon was pretty crucial, especially around the red zone, you know, goal line. Um, you know, so do they run less? Are they valuing like? It's weird because Brian Callahan's gone, and what does he do right away when he gets to Tennessee? Like right when free agency opens, he signs Tony Pollard to a big deal, and they do have Tajay Spears. Like he he's valuing the run more than the Bengals did, and he's gone, and then they go for Mixon the Moss. It's like. Are, are they actually going more towards the pass? And like, it's pretty crazy to think about. So what's kind of the plan there? Um, and do they try to balance it more? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, and the same thing I kind of, I just said, uh, if Burrow gets hurt, like what, what's, what's the, it's like, it's crazy to think about like, what's the decision, um, change in scheme and our quarterback, like it could cause a downfall. Really? I like, I, I think, you know, my take, like you gotta, you gotta roll with Burrow unless it's like a career or anything. Like, I mean, obviously like, but you, I think that's kind of obvious actually, but you do have to mo- really monitor. Like right now they're not really monitoring the quarterback situation in the off season, but you got to monitor it going forward. Um, yeah, they do have a last play schedule. That's a good point as well. Um, tough division. You still got to play those teams, but, uh, that could kind of give them a b- boost if healthy, keep bringing up if healthy, you know, so that's, that's the big thing. So some good points there by Cameron Sullivan. Um, never forgetful. I kind of a two parter here. I think the, the bottom one he had was, you know, it was that June 4th when I started talking about this idea. Um, he had kind of a bold take. Jermaine Burton will be receiver two in production this season. Uh, all the tools to take the job. Yeah. He's very talented. Like to me, like if, if he didn't have off the field issues, he's probably a very early second round pick. Um, maybe the best hands in the class. He has some speed. He's really good at controlling the sideline. That's the big question. I don't think people realize it either. Like I, I think people maybe think he's a Tyler Boyd, a replacement, almost a Tyler Burton mix the two together. And he can be, he has upside to be that, but that's really not what he was at Alabama. He's more of a 
T. Higgins replacement, but a similar hands, obviously different bodies though. Like control the sideline, um, a little more quickness, but less size. Um, you know, so how does he step up? What's the situation with T. Higgins? Um, uh, yeah, Chase, he's probably he's saying that Chase Brown could pass up Zach Moss, and Chase Brown had some moments, some good home run moments last year. Mims starting O line by the end of the year, he could be. You know, Trent Brown's only been good with the Patriots. He didn't really work out elsewhere, and he constantly gets injured. He's very talented, but he constantly gets injured. So I think Mims will be in there. Mims has a, he's raw, like he'll have his hiccups. He has a ton of upside because the traits are there, and for limited experience, he's pretty good for very limited experience. Uh, He's kind of got durability issues, like kind of just having to come out of the game. Like, does he get in better shape? Saw Nick Saban talk about it during the draft. Like, highly talented potential player, but, man, this guy, like, you almost said, like, is he a little soft? Like, is he, like, does does he have it? Like, so that that's kind of the worry. And he started to drop down my board a little bit as we got closer to the draft. Um, he definitely has first-round upside. Um, you know, so I was surprised they took him over Guyton, to be honest. But a lot of upside there. Um, but yeah, he might have to take over in that spot and he's, he's talented, um, career year for Joe Burrow. He's predicting in a 13 and three, one tie with the Steelers at the end. So in, I can see that. I don't actually, that sounds bold, but I don't know if it's that bold. Uh, then Pete Thamel toes. That was, Oh, Pete Thamel. I got it. That took me a second. Good one. Uh, Jamar extension. Yeah. What's going on with that? I mean, it's gotta be done. I wasn't worried about Jefferson being extended. That finally happened. I shouldn't even, shouldn't even say finally, like finally would be like, before next off season, they could have put the tag on him. I'm not worried about Jamar extension. You know, there's plenty of time for that. I'm not worried about it at all. It's going to happen. Uh, you just don't let a guy like that go. Uh, Burrow wristwatch. Yeah, we're all watching. That's huge. And he mentioned, mentioned the Dax Hill position switch. That's to be pretty big. I mean, if you've watched this video, I'm pretty excited about that. Actually, I'm not going to put high standards and expectations right away for him. He's got to learn the position. But um, yeah, I just got to talk about yeah, kind of a two-part. Like, they have other receivers, but who's going to step up for Boyd? Who's going to, like, be the guy to replace T. Higgins? Um, I actually, actually almost think Burton. To me, it would make – and I could be wrong. They could try to put Burton in the slot. I, I think he'll play more slot than he did in Alabama. But I think that's more the T. Higgins – a different style T. Higgins replacement, kind of getting ready for the future. We'll see. It should be fun to watch. And then, yeah, there's been talk about Anna Romo uh, moving on year after year and he kind of just sticks and you know stays and kind of go every year is kind of like Super Bowl or bust like guys are going to be have an expired contract expired contract coming up and then I, I don't know if Andrew and Ronald is very good he's underrated uh, is he going to be anytime he could be gone so like what situation with 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 him there um yeah and I, I think if he would go like people talk about like when Mike Zimmer bring him back uh, that would have been a great replacement, but the Cowboys just hired him this off season. So that'd kind of be like, it'd kind of suck. It'd sting a little bit. Like if Anna Romo is gone after this year, it's like, who the hell do we get? I'm sure somebody's going to be out there, but that was kind of always the guy like that. Everyone in the back of their minds were like, yeah, could we get him? Could we, they get him back? It's a real, and we'll see him with the Cowboys, but um, that's going to be interesting too. We're not in the Cowboys video, but that defense is built to fit more I love Zimmer he's great I think he'll do good but the def- the players the good players even are more fit more Dan Quinn's defense so how's that going to work um but yeah a lot of things to watch it's mainly stay healthy and it's a very fun team to watch because they can do some damage but that'll wrap it up for this one uh comment which teams I should do next uh, there's actually a tie on the last one the Bengals the Bills so I, I'm excited about I'm excited about the Bills one too so we could get to that maybe next uh, but let me know. A lot of content on the channel, especially on our Twitter as well. Links pinned in the comments for that. Anything else you're looking for, it's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.